that Sighthaus Museum in Wolfsburg houses many milestones of automotive history. Today, our tester Christoph Bauer is taking a ride in the American sports car, the Chevrolet Corvette. As the first truly American convertible of the post-war era, the Corvette filled a market niche, as Christoph explains. In 1950, Americans were wild for roadsters, the epitome of freedom on wheels. They were sporty and had no roof to cramp your style. Driving along with the wind in your hair fit the American way of life. The only problem was, back then, no one was building them in the U.S. But the Corvette changed all that. Production of the first American-made sports car began at the Chevrolet factory in Flint, Michigan in 1953. The Corvette's eye-catching body was shaped by General Motors designer Harley Earl. This Chevy model was also the world's first mass-produced car to feature a fiberglass body. Christoph says that after its debut in 1953, customers clamored for the Corvette. GM couldn't keep up with demand. The company had little experience working with this new material, fiberglass, so everything took much longer than planned. Most customers had lost patience by the time the cars were ready for delivery, so Christoph says hundreds of Corvettes wound up collecting dust at the factory. In addition to the long delivery times, the Corvette was also overpriced, selling for close to 3,000 US dollars. And it used Chevrolet's famous Stovebolt straight six engine. But this motor, which dated from 1930, proved to be completely unfit for use in a sports car. Christoph notes that people automatically associate the Corvette with a V8 engine, but these were only used from 1955 onwards. This model still uses an inline six-cylinder with 3.8 liters of cubic capacity and just 155 horsepower. He says that when coupled with his two-speed automatic transmission, it just doesn't feel like a sports car. So he's going to concentrate on enjoying the beauty of the car and the Tuscan scenery. He quickly finds the perfect backdrop, Monte Regione, near the city of Siena. This medieval fortress is a fitting match for a sports car that's also antiquated, at least in technological terms. When it comes to design, Christoph says GM was really inventive. The Corvette has no door handles, but removable side windows, as you'd expect in a Roadster, and an impressive front end. The radiator grill gives it a fearsome look, and the headlights are covered with mesh. But Christoph says the real coup was the fiberglass body, comprised of 46 parts. With Harley Earl as designer, the end result was a street-legal show car. The tail fins disappeared two years later, though, in an attempt to make the Corvette a true roadster, not a cruiser. In the 1950s, American cars were awash in chrome and tail fins. For the most part, the Corvette avoided such excesses. As you'd expect from a convertible, the soft top is makeshift. At 4.25 meters, the Corvette's length lies between that of its competitors, MG's MGA Roadster and the Jaguar XK. Its pure sports car image doesn't apply to the Corvette's colorful interior. This huge straight six engine made from cast iron would probably be better suited to powering a steamship. The handling of the first generation Corvettes left a little to be desired too. Christoph explains that the name Corvette was taken from a small and highly maneuverable warship. And that borrowed name suits the car to a T, he says, because its capricious handling means drivers have to take great care to stay solid in the turns. Building sophisticated suspensions and refined engines weren't exactly American car makers' strengths in those days. So the first Corvette was neither fast nor much fun to drive. That sounds like it would be the death knell for most convertibles. 
But Christoph says the Corvette's lovely. Just look at this interior, the curving dashboard, beautiful instruments and stunning panorama windows. Of course, they could have made it a bit bigger and taller. If you're over 1.85 meters tall, you look over the windshield and have the wind in your face. Even if the first Corvettes needed some adjustments and fine tuning, that's all forgotten once you feel the wind in your hair. Christoph says that after getting off to a bad start, the Corvette could have been a flop. Instead, its V8 engine made it the incarnation of the American dream. And as the first mass production vehicle to have a fiberglass body, he says the Corvette is a milestone in automotive history. And the Corvette's success story is still going on. Now in its seventh generation, the sports car can easily keep pace with its European counterparts. Over 1.5 million Corvettes have been built, making this all-American sports car a force to be reckoned with.